Hello everyone. Happy afternoon. A very good afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Uh, a quick note whether the audio visual is all good. Yes, uh, am I audible and visible everyone? Okay, that's great. So here we have the uh, NF100 that is DPG and FMGE top 100 topics. And this is uh, episode 80 that we have. So we have reached episode 80. And our today's topic of discussion is antiplatelets and anticoagulants, which is a very, 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 very important topic. Uh, for uh, all the exams right so we would learn some tricks to remember uh, this topic and apart from that so it's been very very long that we have uh, not had uh, <coughs> kbmd so we have kbmd that is a uh, con banega md uh, today at uh, 4 pm okay today at uh, 4 pm on the unacademy app it's a free live class. You can use the code Dr. Nikita for enrolling. I would be sharing the link uh, on the Telegram group. Right. So let's meet at 4 p.m. again for an interesting mixed pack KBMD. Basically, in these last days before the exam, we need to hone our MCQ solving skills. So the KBMDs aim at all of that. Right. So yes, after a long time, we have KBMD at 4 p.m. today. And a very, very important announcement and an update here that uh, uh, at an academy, we are celebrating the Republic Day offer. That means uh, now we have 20% uh, off on all the medical PG subscriptions. Uh, that includes the short short 150 course as well. So recently I'd received a lot of uh, messages from the students saying that they missed on the 23% offer that we had. So you can make the best of this opportunity now which has 20% uh, off which includes the short short 150 uh, which is under the goal which is medical PG mnemonics goal. Okay it's a different subscription than the neat PG live and uh, this is valid till January 28th. Right. So make the best of it. And we have combo subscription as well, which is uh, an academy neat PG vitals that is recorded and live and iconic subscription as well, which is uh, an academy with prep ladder both. Right. And with one year and above combo subscription, uh, you get free notes uh, also available. So you can use the code uh, Dr. Nikita uh, basically to get uh, additional discount while you are subscribing. Uh, Neat PG Vitals is uh, the recorded classes that we have for all the subjects and uh, apart from this would be over and above the Neat PG live classes that would be running on the platform and uh, we have a special launch price of uh, 12k for Neat PG Vitals right and on Neat PG live we are launching this uh, last leap marathon uh, batch so we are launching this uh, last sleep marathon batch which has started on january 22 it has approximately 100 hours of rapid revision by all the educators for 19 subjects and uh, now you can uh, subscribe this you can get this subscription at just 3200 and you can use the code as well to get additional discount tnd hai? Uh, tnd where uh, mega We have the TNDs going on on the Neat PG Live as well. And then from the month of February in the mnemonics call, I would be taking the MCQ practice, the KBMDs, the TNDs, basically whatever is required for the last minute uh, revision. That would also happen in the mnemonics call. Right. So let's start with our discussion of the today's topic that is drugs used in clotting disorders. So we have the drugs that are anti-clotting drugs and we have the drugs which facilitate the clotting. Now focus is in the today's session, the focus is on uh, anti-clotting drugs. So we have antiplatelet drugs, we have anticoagulants and then we have thrombolytics, right? So which are the anti-clotting drugs that we have? The anti-clotting drugs. So first starting with the platelets. So we have anti-platelet drugs. Then comes the clot that is a coagulation, anticoagulants. Once the clot is formed, the lysis of the clot that is clot lysis that is by thrombolytics. Okay, that is by thrombolytics. So let's have a look at uh, these groups of drugs 
uh, that is uh, antiplatelet drugs. Now what comes under antiplatelets and what comes under anticoagulants? So this diagram depicts the antiplatelet drugs. Okay. Now understanding the function of the platelets. First thing to happen, okay, when there is endothelial injury, first thing to happen is the adhesion of the platelet. Okay, so the first thing is platelet adhesion. Okay, the first thing is platelet adhesion. What compound is important for platelet adhesion? What compound is important for platelet adhesion? We have GP1, okay, GP1A, GP1B basically that is important for the platelet adhesion, right? Once the platelet is adhered to the endothelial wall, then comes the rest of the platelets. So platelet aggregation comes next. Now what helps in platelet aggregation? So this thromboxane A2, TXA2, this is indicating thromboxane A2. What is this thromboxane A2 formed from which compound? Thromboxane A2 is formed from which compound? So thromboxin A2 is formed from arachidonic acid by the enzyme cyclooxygenase. What does this thromboxin A2 do? So this thromboxane which is released here, it goes and it is uh, participating in the platelet aggregation. Okay. So this cyclooxygenase is inhibited by which drug? It is inhibited by aspirin. So cyclooxygenase inhibitor aspirin, it's an antiplatelet drug because it is not allowing the formation of thromboxane A2 by inhibiting the enzyme cyclooxygenase 1. Okay, at low dose, aspirin at low dose inhibits cyclooxygenase 1 more than cyclooxygenase 2. At high dose, it is cyclooxygenase 2 as well. So this is cyclooxygenase 1 that is used as an antiplatelet drug, the low dose of aspirin. So now we can see here that this one is the uh, thromboxane receptor and we have the ADP as well. Okay, the ADP also acts on the platelet receptors and it helps in formation of the clot. So even the ADP receptor antagonist, okay, the ADP antagonist, receptor antagonist, what is the ADP receptor also called as? The P2Y12 receptor, okay, the P2Y12 receptor antagonist that we talk about. Uh, just give me a minute, not able to see the live chat, just a minute. Okay, all right. So what do we have here is uh, the uh, ADP receptor that is P2Y12 receptor antagonist, which includes clopidogrel, ticlopidin, prasugrel, Right, there are these drugs here, ticagrelor, so clopidogrel, ticlopidin, so clop, clop wale drugs yaad rakna, which are the ADP receptor antagonist. So grill and clop and grillor. Okay, we would see the rest of the names as well. Now, once we have this, we also have this role of GP2B3A. What is the role of GP2B3A? GP2B3A, as you see here, it, it binds fibrinogen, which acts as a bridge basically to form the platelet aggregates. So this has a role, this uh, GP2B3A fibrinogen, these have role in platelet aggregation. Okay, these have the role in platelet aggregation. We know the disorder, uh, which is, uh, what is that disorder which affects the platelet aggregation by the defect in this GP2B3A? That is Glanzmann's, right? The Glanzmann's thromboasthenia. Glanzmann's, remember GG, it is a defect in platelet aggregation. That is GP2B3A. GP1B9, which is required for platelet adhesion. What is uh, that defect for platelet adhesion? That is Bernard Solier. Remember Bernard AD, that is GP1B9 defect. It's a adhesion wala defect. Okay. So this we have GP2B3A antagonist as well, which are the drugs. So remember fibrinogen ka role hai ya, to fib wale drugs, eptifibatide, okay, tirofiban. So fib wale drugs or BA ya AB wale drugs, that is abscizimab, eptifibatide, it also has BA, tirofiban, it also has BA. So the drugs containing fib in their uh, spelling or BA or AB in their spelling, these are the drugs 
विच आर यू नो द जी पी टू बी थ्री ए एंटागोनिस्ट राइट सो दीज आर फ्यू एंटी प्लेटलेट ड्रग्स द रेस्ट दैट वी हैव योर आर द फॉस्फो डाई ईस्टरेज इन ही बीटर्स वाई फॉस्फो डाई ईस्टरेज इन ही बीटर्स बिकॉज साइक्लिक ए एम पी इनिबिट्स दिस जी पी टू बी थ्री ए सो दैट्स इनिबिटिंग द प्लेटलेट एग्रीगेशन सो वी वॉन्ट इंक्रीज द साइक्लिक ए एम पी सो वी प्रिवेंट द डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ साइक्लिक ए एम पी राइट सो विच आर द ड्रग्स विच प्रिवेंट द डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ साइक्लिक ए एम पी दैट इज डाइपेरिडेमोल एंड सिलास्टोजोल ओके डाइपेरिडेमोल एंड सिलास्टोजोल विच आर फॉस्फो डाई ईस्टरेस इन ही बीटर्स ऑल्सो दिस डाइपेरिडेमोल इट ऑल्सो एक्ट एज एडिनोसिन एंटागोनिस्ट ओके दीज ऑल्सो एक्ट एज एडिनोसिन एंटागोनिस्ट सो लुकिंग एट द लिस्ट बेसिकली ऑफ द एंटी प्लेटलेट ड्रग्स वॉट डिड वी सी साइक्लो ऑक्सीजनेस वन इनिबीटर एस्पिरिन it inhibits the thromboxane a2 synthesis right it's inhibiting thromboxane a2 synthesis p2y12 receptor inhibitor that is basically adp receptor antagonist so some are reversible some are irreversible so which are reversible and which are irreversible which are reversible and which are irreversible so remember that or wale tikka grillor can grillor these are reversible that means they are temporary okay remember that temporary is or so tikka grillor can grillor or wale drugs are temporary that means they are reversible rest ticlopidin clopidogrel and prasugrel they are not grillor they are just grel so grel wale drugs these are uh, these are the irreversible inhibitors okay remember these are irreversible then you have gp2b 3a inhibitors which are fibrinogen wale fib ya ba apcimab eptifibatide and tirofiban very very frequently asked question phosphodiesterase inhibitor dipyridamol this is also adenosine antagonist okay adenosine antagonist another drug that we need to remember here vorapexar what is vorapexar it is the par 1 remember par vorapexar is par antagonist x matlab antagonist what is this par 1 receptor it is the receptor for thrombin okay so basically it is thrombin receptor antagonist so this is vorapexar so what do you need to remember here is some important points about clopidogrel what is the important point for clopidogrel remember this clopidogrel it requires hepatic activation okay it requires hepatic activation by cytochrome p 2c19 okay it requires hepatic activation by cytochrome p 2c19 and this cytochrome p 2c19 this is inhibited by omeprazole okay this is an important drug interaction that is asked in the exam so omeprazole inhibits cytochrome p 2c19 that is why clopidogrel will not be activated and we would not see the effect of clopidogrel okay we would not see the effect of clopidogrel so that is why a patient on omeprazole clopidogrel we would see the failure of clopidogrel so omeprazole basically leads to clopidogrel failure okay remember this is an important drug interaction that we should know all right everybody is clear uh, with the anti platelet drugs everybody is clear with the anti platelet drugs so we have uh, aspirin we have the adp antagonist then we have uh, gp2b3a the thrombin receptor par wala and we have phosphodiesterase inhibitor okay then we have phosphodiesterase inhibitor an important point also remember that the silastazol that we spoke about phosphodiesterase inhibitor this is also used for c4c it is used for claudication as well because it has this additional vasodilator properties okay it has uh, additional vasodilator properties right now going on to the next group that is anticoagulants this was about antiplatelets now going to anticoagulants now in anticoagulants vitamin k antagonist why vitamin k antagonist would be an anticoagulant because we read that vitamin k is required biochemistry mein padha hai kaun sa reaction karta hai vitamin k 
विटामिन के डज वॉट रिएक्शन ऑन द क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स इट इज गामा कार्बोक्सीलेशन ओके इट डज गामा कार्बोक्सीलेशन रिमेंबर के फॉर के इट डज कार्बोक्सीलेशन ऑफ विच अमाइनो एसिड ऑफ ग्लूटमिक एसिड ओके गामा कार्बोक्सीलेशन ऑफ ग्लूटमिक एसिड ऑन विच क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स आर विटामिन के डिपेंडेंट टू सेवन नाइन टेन ओके टू सेवन नाइन टेन आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन विटामिन के सो वेन यू गिव विटामिन के एंटागोनिस्ट सो दिस गामा कार्बोक्सीलेशन विल नॉट हैपन द क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स विल नॉट बी एक्टिवेटेड एंड दैट इज वाई इट्स एन एंटी कोआगुलेंट सो वट इज द ड्रग विच इज विटामिन के एंटागोनिस्ट इट इज वॉर फेरिन सो रिमेंबर दैट वॉर फेरिन इज ऑन अ वॉर विद विटामिन के वॉरफेरिन इज ऑन अ वॉर विथ विटामिन के इट्स अ विटामिन के एंटागोनिस्ट सो एंटीडोट फॉर वॉरफेरिन वॉरफेरिन अगर ओवर डोज हो गया तो हम एंटीडोट में देंगे विटामिन के ओके विटामिन के वन नेक्स्ट इज द वेरियस क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स इन बीटर्स आर द एंटी कोएगुलेंस सो वी हैव थ्रॉम्बिन विच इज फैक्टर टू बेसिकली थ्रॉम्बिन इज फैक्टर टू सो वी हैव डायरेक्ट थ्रॉम्बिन इन बीटर्स इन डायरेक्ट थ्रॉम्बिन इन बीटर्स and we have the factor 10a inhibitors now which are the factor 10a inhibitors xa inhibitors are the drugs which have xa in their spelling right so xa riva roxa ban so xa and banning xa that is factor 10a very very important question so what do we have is a uh, riva roxa ban epixa ban edoxa ban betrixa ban these are xa ban that means these are factor 10a inhibitor drugs and all these drugs remember are given orally very very important these are the oral anticoagulants the drugs which have x in their spelling remember they are given orally okay they are given orally next in the direct thrombin inhibitors okay what are the names of direct thrombin inhibitors it's a very important question dabi gat trend remember trend that is t r a n it basically stands for thrombin a n is antagonist so remember tran the tran is thrombin antagonist this is very very frequently asked dabigatrin is a direct thrombin antagonist given directly that means it is given oral so which is an oral uh, a uh, direct thrombin inhibitor dabigatrin okay remember that this is oral direct thrombin inhibitor very very important parenteral the rest of them ergotroban so when i say troban so again it is troban is thrombin antagonist thrombin ko ban karne wala troban then you have lepirudin desirudin and bevalirudin so all these dins are remember din stands for direct inhibitors okay these are the direct thrombin inhibitors and all of these are parenteral dabigatrin given directly orally remember it's a oral thrombin inhibitor okay it's an oral thrombin inhibitor next one which are the indirect thrombin inhibitors matlab jab thrombin ko inhibit karna hai to uske dushman ko hum activate karte hain that is anti thrombin ओके सो दैट इज बेसिकली एंटी थ्रॉम्बिन को एक्टिवेट करके फिर हम थ्रॉम्बिन को इनिबिट कर रहे हैं सो ऑल द पेरेंट्स ओके ऑल द पेरेंट्स दीज आर इन डायरेक्ट थ्रॉम्बिन इनिबिटर्स दे एक्ट वाया एंटी थ्रॉम्बिन एंड इनिबिटिंग द फैक्टर टेन ए एज वेल सो अनफ्रैक्शनेटेड हिपेरिन लो मॉलिकुलर वेट हिपेरिन फॉन्डा पैरिनक्स all these parents are indirect thrombin inhibitors and all these parents remember are given parenteral okay parenteral these are all parenteral parents are given parenteral so heparin is given parenteral warfarin is given orally which are the low molecular weight heparins enoxaparin delta parin tenzaparin which like heparin have parin in their spelling these are the low molecular weight heparins okay these are the low molecular weight heparins this unfractionated heparin by activating anti thrombin it inhibits factor 10a and factor 2 the low molecular weight heparin fonda parinux remember fonda parinux it is x unique ux it is unique to x that means it inhibits factor 10 only it does not inhibit factor 2 that is thrombin low molecular weight is 10a 
more than 2. Okay, 10A more than 2. We will see a table which tells you the difference between uh, these three group of drugs. Okay. So, uh, everybody is clear with the anticoagulants drug. So, we have vitamin K antagonist warfarin, direct thrombin inhibitors, troban, ergotroban, dabigatrin and dens, the direct inhibitors. Okay, bivalirudin and uh, lepirudin, all of those. Then we have the indirect ones which are parents. Parents are indirect ones. So, unfractionated heparin, low molecular weight heparin and fonda parinux. And then we have the direct oral uh, factor 10A inhibitor, which is XA ban. Okay, these are the drugs which are XA ban. Now, uh, look at this image which shows the mechanism of action of heparin. Unfractionated heparin. You know, you, you see this long chain with unfractionated heparin. And it has a pentasaccharide sequence. Look at this low molecular weight. The chain is smaller and there is a pentasaccharide sequence. So, what happens is these are binding to antithrombin. Okay, these are binding to antithrombin. That is why these are indirect inhibitors. And by binding to antithrombin, then this factor 10A and a factor 2, that is thrombin, binds to it and it is inhibited. While for low molecular weight heparin, it is factor 10 more than factor 2. For Fonda Parinux, it is only only factor 10 inhibitor okay so remember that unfractionated heparin low molecular weight heparin and then you have fonda parinux fonda is 5 that means it has only that pentasaccharide sequence okay it has only the pentasaccharide sequence so jaise jaise chain come hoti hai size mein the uniqueness to the factor 10 increases the factor 10a activity increases the factor 2 activity decreases Look at these uh, direct thrombin inhibitors. This is thrombin. This is the active site. Univalent direct thrombin inhibitor that is ergotroban. A for 1. Ergotroban. It binds only to the active site. Bivalent. The rest of them bivalent ones. Uh, those bind to two sites on thrombin. So ergotroban is univalent. The rest of the parenteral we saw in bivalent direct thrombin inhibitors which is the oral direct thrombin inhibitor which is the oral direct thrombin inhibitors that is dabigatrin okay very very important dabigatrin so this is included under no ox newer oral anticoagulants is one is dabigatrin and the other one is factor 10a inhibitors because these are given orally. Okay, rivaroxaban, epixaban, edixaban. These are given orally. So, these are the NOACs. Right? Now, uh, comparing this table, very, very important. The difference between heparin and warfarin. So, remember, heparin is given parenteral. Heparin is parenteral. Warfarin is oral. Okay? And then what we have, where does heparin act? Heparin acts in the blood. Antithrombin ko bind karke, fir factor 10 factor 2 ko inhibit kar rahe. Warfarin acts on liver. Because warfarin inhibits the new, uh, warfarin is inhibiting the uh, vitamin K. So it is inhibiting the new clotting factor synthesis. So whatever clotting factors are there in the blood already, they will not be inhibited by warfarin. So, thinking logically, which one will be faster acting, which one would be slower acting? So, heparin, because it acts in the blood, so directly it is bl blocking the clotting factors there. So, it has rapid onset of action. Warfarin takes days. It has slower onset of action. The uh, uh, duration, the onset of action will be limited by the half-life of the pre-existing factors. So, we know that what are the first factors to be inhibited by warfarin? First is protein C and then is factor 7 because it has the minimum half-life. So, first is protein C and then is factor 7, right? That is why what we see is, sabse pehle protein C inhibit hua. Protein C has anti-clotting, anti-clotting activity. So, if protein C is inhibited, there is clot initial side effect that we might see with warfarin is dermal vascular necrosis. Uh, the purple toe because of protein C inhibition. Okay, because of protein C inhibition, 
purple toe has been asked as a recent image based question as well right next mechanism of action heparin it activates anti thrombin 3 okay then this anti thrombin 3 inactivates factor 10a and thrombin warfarin we said is 27910 which is vitamin k dependent clotting factors usko inhibit karta hai what do we need to monitor for heparin and what do we need to monitor for warfarin so remember for heparin you can remember the uh, mnemonic that is happy and for warfarin it is wept so remember the two opposite words happy and wept what does that mean heparin ke liye a p t t monitor karna padega it is inhibiting the intrinsic pathway of coagulation warfarin inhibits the extrinsic pathway for extrinsic pathway we need to monitor prothrombin time so pt inr pt increases with warfarin aptt is what we need to monitor for unfractionated heparin the advantage with low molecular weight heparins is we don't need a monitoring for them okay regular monitoring is not required even if we require the monitoring for low molecular weight it is by factor 10a test we don't do aptt because they have preferential action on factor 10a inhibition okay next one what is the antidote protamin reverses unfractionated heparin but protamin is does only partial reversal with the low molecular weight heparin protamin ka aisa hai jitni lambi chain hogi utna zyada reversal hoga to unfractionated ke sath it is like complete reversal with low molecular weight it's incomplete for warfarin it is vitamin k1 vitamin k ka dushman warfarin warfarin ka dushman vitamin k so remember it is vitamin k1 and we can give plasma and the prothrombin complex concentrates a uh, use where do we use heparin where do we use warfarin when we want acute uh, you know anticoagulation because heparin is faster acting so that is where we use heparin if we want anticoagulation activity over a long period of time uh, oral drug dena hai opd basis pe to hum warfarin dete hain jab warfarin dete hain initially saath mein heparin we give because warfarin takes some days to start the action so for those days the initial days heparin is given right use in pregnancy heparin is happy in pregnancy okay but warfarin is on a war with pregnancy also so it has teratogenic effect okay warfarin has teratogenic effect it crosses the placental barrier because it is a small lipid soluble molecule so it crosses the placenta and it can cause teratogenic effect in the fetus that is why in pregnancy first trimester we give heparin because that is the time of organogenesis in second trimester when the organogenesis is done we can give warfarin again towards the last the third trimester we switch to heparin again what are the teratogenic side effects with the warfarin the uh, you know the nasal cartilage formation is affected okay the bone formation is affected that is what we see with warfarin okay that's the teratogenic effects with warfarin everybody is clear with the difference between heparin and warfarin very very important please give me a quick thumbs up so that i know that all of you are there and you are understanding the concepts and also the tricks to remember this topic yes all right great see purple toe when do we have a toe turning purple when the blood supply is affected there's a clot so what happens with warfarin the first protein to be affected is protein c protein c has anti clotting activity so protein c jab block hoga to clotting zyada hoga clotting matlab wo purple color aayega purple toe okay that is purple toe right now going on to the next table important table which tells you the difference between unfractionated heparin low molecular weight heparin and fonda parinux let's have a look at this so look at this one structure unfractionated heparin 
it's a long saccharide chain we read it under glycose aminoglycan right biochemistry may be padte hain so it's a long saccharide chain low molecular weight is low molecular weight because it is short saccharide and fonda parenux is just the pentasaccharide remember fonda is 5 okay fonda is 5 factor 10a every all of them inhibit factor 10a factor 10a is all factor 2a jitna long chain utna 2 wala zyada uh, activity hoga so the long chain acts on both equally and this will have factor 10a more than 2a fonda parinux remember fonda parinux is unique to factor 10 okay the activity is unique to factor 10 it does not inhibit thrombin so pantasaccharide has no action on factor 2a that is thrombin wala uh, activity nahi hai bioavailability all of these you can see that orally they are not absorbed so these are not given oral so parents are given parenteral so heparin low molecular weight heparin fonda parinux these are given parenteral heparin unfractionated subcutaneous the long chains are not absorbed well so subcutaneous nahi heparin iv unfractionated is iv this the low molecular weight heparin ka advantage ye hai ki subcutaneous is also good because it is short chains right so remember the short chains wala sc is subcutaneous and ye aur bhi short hai fonda parinux is only a pentasaccharide so it is subcutaneous the absorption is very good variable response we see with unfractionated heparin because this unfractionated heparin is cleared by the reticulo endothelial system it is not cleared by the kidney right so reticulo endothelial system are clearing unfractionated heparin so we cannot monitor uh, right we cannot monitor the response the response is variable here this is cleared by the kidneys so we know that based on the renal function ki uska activity kaisa rahega dose kam karna hai dose zyada karna hai so no variable response here both these drugs uh, low molecular weight and fonda parinux they are cleared by the kidneys safety in renal disease because this is not uh, metabolized by the kidney so unfractionated is safe in renal impairment low molecular weight is used with close monitoring and this is contraindicated in renal failure so renal failure fonda parinux contraindicated monitoring here we require and this is monitored with aptt we saw happy this is uh, required only in renal impairment otherwise routinely we don't require the monitoring and the monitoring is with factor 10a si it is not by the aptt with fonda parinux no monitoring is required okay monitoring is not required protamin sulfate full reversal partial reversal because it acts on the long chains and yahan pe there is no reversal the advantage with low molecular weight is heparin induced thrombocytopenia is less osteoporosis side effect is less so basically side effects are less with the newer group of drugs that is low molecular weight and fonda parinux So, if a patient on heparin uh, develops uh, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, then what do we give? We give direct thrombin inhibitors. Okay, then we need to give direct thrombin inhibitors. Right? Is this clear with everyone? The difference between the three. Now, going on to the next one. What are the advantages of low molecular weight heparin? What are the advantages? So. it has better bioavailability and longer half life so this can be given subcutaneous once or twice daily this is a simplified clearance low molecular weight heparin is renal one no need of monitoring unless there is a renal failure even if uh, monitoring is required it is with the anti factor 10a test that we need to do this is safer the risk is less of heparin induced thrombocytopenia and osteoporosis now let's have a look this was about the clotting factors let's have a look at the reversal agents or the antidotes for heparin what is the antidote 
protamin sulfate and this is for long chain that is unfractionated heparin for warfarin it is vitamin k which vitamin k vitamin k1 for river roxaban xa wala is xa wala and dexa net alpha for dabigatrin dada -D -A, it is idaru sizu map this is a recently asked question as well so remember that idaru it is dada -D -A, dabigatrin xa is for xa k is for warfarin and protamin is for heparin pr pr protamin is a antidote for heparin okay protamin is an antidote for heparin right clear with everyone is this clear with everyone uh just give me a minute my phone is about to get conged and i might not see the live chat so i'll just connect the charger Uh, am I audible and visible now? Okay, that's great. So let's on with the discussion here. What do we have next? So everybody's clear with antiplatelets and the anticoagulants, their mechanism of action, very, very important. Now going on to the next one that we have is uh, the fibrinolytics and the antifibrinolytics. So what do we have here? What does the fibrinolysis? What compound does fibrinolysis? Fibrinolysis is done by plasmin. Okay, fibrinolysis is done by plasmin. So, plasmin is coming from plasminogen. That's the precursor for plasmin. Now, uh, plasmin degrades this fibrinogen, right? It's stimulating the fibrinogen degradation and also the fibrin degradation. So, basically, it increases the FDP, the fibrin degradation products, right? So, and that is how it is, it is lysing the fibrin, that is the clot, okay, that is the clot. Now, uh, the drugs, which are the TPA analogs, the tissue plasminogen activator analogs. So, the drugs which are plasminogen activators, these will be fibrinolytics, okay, these would be fibrinolytics. So, like we have alteplas, right, tenecteplas. These are the ones which are the TPA analogs. We also have the combination of streptokinase and plasminogen. That is what is that called as any strep place. Okay, that is any strep place is also what we have, which is the combination of streptokinase and plasminogen. That means it is not a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. Okay, it's not a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. So these are the drugs that would do the clot lysis. 
On the other hand, we have anti-plasmin drugs, which are anti-fibrinolytics. Where do we use this anti-fibrinolytics? Where there is a lot of bleeding, right? Like menorrhagia. Patient with menorrhagia, you must have heard very commonly, we use pause tablet. That is tranexa or tranexamic acid is used. So tranexamic acid and amino caproic acid, epsilon amino caproic acid, that is EA, CA, these are the ones which are antifibrinolytics. Okay, these are the ones which are antifibrinolytics, right? So uh, let's have a look at these one. So in this plasminogen activators, we have ones which are only specific for plasminogen, which is bound to the fibrin that is fibrin specific and we have the ones which is fibrin non-specific so remember that rat rat is very specific rat will only bind rat will only bind it is fibrin specific so reteplase tenecteplase and alteplase these are the ones which are fibrin specific streptokinase is the least fibrin specific and also it has the lowest incidence of intracranial hemorrhage. Any streptase is not a recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. We said it's a combination of plasminogen and streptokinase. Tenecteplase is the most streptofibrin uh, specific and it is given as a single bolus. Even this is asked as a question. So remember that tenecteplase is specific and it is single bolus, most specific and single bolus. So remember alphabetically S, S, P, Q, R, S, T. So most specific single dose is tenecteplase. Streptokinase on the other hand is the least specific. Okay, it's the least specific. Now let's quickly have a look at this table. So from your reference book and this summarizes everything about whatever we have learned about these drugs. So anticoagulants, uh, we'll come to this later on. Thrombolytic drugs, pele antiplatelet ke important points dekhte. So cyclooxygenase inhibitor is aspirin, right? Remember that it's an irreversible cyclooxygenase inhibitor. It reduces the production of thromboxane A2, which stimulates the platelet aggregation. So it is used for prevention and treatment of arterial thrombosis. Thrombotic for anti-thrombotic effect, we need a lower dose. Okay, anti-inflammatory, higher dose, COX-2. Duration of activity is longer because it is irreversible action is what it does. Right, it can cause nephrotoxicity and uh, uh, remember very, very important aspirin toxicity can be your question. The classical features that we have is tinnitus. Okay, tinnitus is an important feature with aspirin. It can lead to hyperventilation and metabolic acidosis because it is salicylic acid. Okay, remember salicylic acid, it causes metabolic acidosis and it causes respiratory alkalosis because it stimulates the respiratory center. Next, we have GP2B3A that is Fibovala or AB wale drugs, Apsizimab, Eptifibatide, Tirofiban. These are the ones which inhibit the platelet aggregation by inhibiting GP2B3A binding to fibrinogen. What are these used for? During PCI to prevent the re -stenosis. Okay. And these are given parenteral. Okay. These are given parenteral. And uh, the side effects that can occur is bleeding and thrombocytopenia. ADP receptor that is P2Y12 out of that clopidogrel pro drug so cp cytochrome p2c19 activates that this is irreversible grel is irreversible again this is used for prevention of re this is given orally okay this is given orally teclopidin older one has more toxicity prasugrel ticagrelor remember or wala is reversible okay or is temporary next we have uh, Phosphodiesterase and adenosine uptake inhibitor, dipyridamol. It inhibits the phosphodiesterase. This is administered oral. Okay, this is administered oral. Next, we have, uh, this is the repeat one, anticoagulant drugs. Okay, the anticoagulant drugs, that is heparins, unfractionated. 
it complexes with antithrombin 3 so it irreversibly inactivates the thrombin and 10a this is used for pulmonary embolism myocardial infarction pci given parenteral monitored with aptt protamin is reversal it can cause thrombocytopenia and osteoporosis low molecular weight enoxaparin deltaparin tenzaparin more selective anti-factor 10 activity more reliable pharmacokinetics with renal elimination protamin reversal only partial and less risk of side effects fonda paranox we have already seen factor 10a inhibitors rivaroxaban epixaban edoxaban and these are given orally right fixed dose no routine monitoring is required even if it is required it's factor 10a and remember that the monitoring is required in renal impairment it binds to factor 10a and uh, remember that rivaroxaban is used in non-valvular atrial fibrillation if it is valvular atrial fibrillation what is the drug we use we use warfarin so very very frequently asked question if it is valvular it is warfarin if it is non-valvular then we use novax okay then we use novax uh, then we have there is no specific reversal agent that we have direct thrombin inhibitors dabigatrin is the oral rest are densantrobans they bind to thrombin directly and these are the drug of choice in hit that is heparin induced thrombocytopenia so we will use this direct thrombin inhibitors dabigatrin is given orally what uh, do we need to do uh, idaru sisu map is reversing the acting of action of dabigatrin okay it is reversing the action of dabigatrin okay then we have warfarin warfarin is your cowmedin antagonist that is vitamin k inhibitor it interferes with vitamin k clotting and anti-clotting factors and it is also used in atrial fibrillation and the valve replacement when there is prosthetic valve in that case we use warfarin okay in that case we use warfarin Viparin, uh, warfarin is given oral it has delayed onset of action and multiple interactions is what we have this should be monitored with prothrombin time vitamin k1 is a reversal agent thrombosis is early side effect due to protein c deficiency and it's a teratogen okay and it's a teratogen uh indranath hit that is heparin induced thrombocytopenia hua agar patient ko so we cannot give heparin now because there is heparin induced side effect so in that case we need to replace by direct thrombin inhibitor okay we need to replace by direct thrombin inhibitor in that case thrombolytic drugs alteplas the recombinant uh, human tissue plasminogen activator basically these convert plasminogen to plasmin so this leads to degradation these are given parenteral the side effect is cerebral hemorrhage which is least with streptokinase okay least with streptokinase and streptokinase is a bacterial protein okay so yes uh, that was about the today's uh, session guys about antiplatelets and anticoagulants i hope this is now easy Please try to solve the questions on this. Remember all the tricks. You can write down all the cheat codes, the mnemonics that you have learned in this topic on one paper and uh, use it for revision time and again. This is an extremely, extremely important topic. Uh, we see the questions on this topic very frequently. When are we meeting next? We are meeting next at 4 p.m. on the Unacademy app for the KBMD. Mixed back some interesting questions and also the mcqs uh, is what we would uh, the mnemonics is what we would do in the 4 pm kbmd class i'll share the pdf on the telegram group after this session okay thank you so much everyone goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you so much